If you're just tuning in, we're still discussing managing grief. And please know there's no right or wrong way to grief, but there are healthy ways to deal with the griefing process. Um, and we'll still join with our guests very soon. But if you want to join this conversation, remember you can join it. Um, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa One with the hashtag Ways. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 Somebody is sending us voice notes on WhatsApp. We can't take voice notes on the show. You have to send a type, um, type your message. message, yes. You see, so there's something she said. When grief strikes, it shows courage or strength, yes. you know. I, I think it is wrong to judge people. It's, okay, look at me. I lost my grandfather. My grandfather was the closest person ever I lost until my brother died this year. Oh my goodness. Mm. I lost my grandfather in 2005, and I can tell you for free. That I still remember. Sometimes oh. I still see him in my dreams up till now. I've also lost an elder sibling. Do you understand what I'm my saying? Older brother. So I'm just saying to you that me, it takes a while for me to process it. It takes a while for me to process death. I don't just wake up, you know. So when you people have stopped your crying, well, ooh, uh, you know, no, I'm saying that when you guys have stopped your crying, that finished. is where my own cry begins. We'll start. So somebody would see me and say, oh, she's not even being emotional. She's not being this. She's not being that. No, we must understand that different people grieve. Differently. differently do you know i had lost also i also lost my elder brother but that was um year 2000 mm. so it makes it 20 years this year wow but trust me i am still in denial mm. that's see, where i've dealt with this grief i which keep is lost. breathing up and down yeah. up and down because i've lost my dad oh. and i've lost my mom oh. and i was there when my mom passed wow. so it's it's not something you you just get over mm, in a it's day it's a long process it's something you just have to keep mm. dealing dealing with, with every day you know when people every told me about day. pastor itwa showing up strong and all that i said he's going pastor through itwa. a lot of he's, pain he's, he's death is not you know he's, he's not something going, going to grieve you know my pain with human beings it's a long time it's, 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 it's you, you never get you over know, it you know my pain with human beings human beings what we see is physical yeah, just you don't. Sad. You cannot open his heart to see what is going on inside his mind. And but Isi, I think we have our guest okay, back, and fantastic. you had a question yes. for her. Taiwo, if you're there, thank you. Mm. Um, so Isi okay. had a question for you. Okay, I have a question for you, and the question goes I, thus. Okay, yes, the question um, goes thus. As a counselor, as a counselor, you've had you've um, had to counsel a lot of um, individuals in the process. What has been the greatest challenge for you, having to counsel somebody who is dealing with some sort of grief, um, grieving, based on is it um, somebody who has lost a spouse, somebody who has lost a child, a child or yeah. someone who has lost a friend? What has been the greatest challenge for you, having to deal with someone like that? The greatest challenge is having to, you know, talk to people in a way that they can accept acceptance. Hmm. Do they it's accept the at the end of the day? Most difficult thing. Acceptance is one of the hardest stages of grief. Because, you know, when we look at um, theories, you find out that grieving thoughts, on grieving thoughts and behaviors, you have different types of stages of grief. But the one that is most difficult is people accepting it. I was hearing you when you were saying that even after 20 years of losing your father, you sometimes are still in denial. You know he's not there, hmm. but you're in denial. I lost my husband and my son 21 years ago, but wow. I still very feel, I feel very much, you know, I'm not in denial anymore. Hmm. I know it's real, but... With my mom that is recent, I, I tend to be in denial, you know, and that's, this is about five months after my mom passed. So with us, you find out that when you're canceling, the most important thing is to bring people into that point of acceptance. acceptance. If you don't accept, hmm. it's not good to stay in denial. Hmm. It's not good to remain in shock or disbelief because the first thing that comes is shock and disbelief, then denial. Then you start to bag in. Is it true? Uh, can it be true? Then regret can, like, may start setting in. Even most times, guilt can set in if you feel you did not, you, you could have done better. Whereas you couldn't. Death is death, you know? Mm -hmm. Then sometimes if it is like a terrible news came on, the, on, on our news waves today in, in Ontario, a, a beautiful teacher with her three lovely daughters was killed in a car accident by a stupid huh. young 
driver, 20 year old. Four lives were lost this afternoon. Hmm. And the husband is there, all his family is gone. So what do you think he's going to feel? Anger. So we have to deal with anger too. Then you have the horrible one out of it in these stages is depression. Hmm. Because it depends on our strength and courage and the support okay. in terms of social support, spiritual support that we have and the way we have already, you know, whether we're strong in terms of our, our, our positivity in life, you know, mm. and, our, and our, as I said in the beginning, maturity. Because if you don't have go through those processes, one or the other, these are, you know, I've mentioned about seven, you find out that the most difficult to it's even go through this is acceptance. When they don't accept, you know what happens? They can't move on. Life becomes a bus stop. I can't move on. Then things set in. Depression is exactly when depression becomes so heavy. And depression is so bad because it can lead to different types of illnesses. Mm. So we have to be very careful when people are going through griefing. You know, as I said, there are those that have delayed shock. I mean, mm. they're in delay, I mean, delay, denial, yeah. because they're still in shock. Yeah. But they're saying to everybody that they're okay. They are smiling, mm. in fact. They are mm. shaking hands, hugging people. But they're not okay. It's when you sit down to talk with them, you know they're not okay. Mm. There is, you know, we're talking about this thing called griefing. And I keep on telling people, each individual, there's no body who has a set time or timetable. Absolutely. I was going to say that. Is there a timetable for Some people thing? take them six to eight weeks. Some people will take them as much as four years. I'm talking about acceptance now because acceptance, uh, acceptance begins to take you to the journey of recovery. Wow. I, I, I am clear yes. in my point of yeah. acceptance. Yes, you are. And therefore, in this time when they have not accepted, you have to keep on talking to them with different, you know, the different ways you talk to them. You, of course, have to be more of a listener. As a counselor, you have to be a listener. You listen to them. They talk a lot of things that sometimes you're wondering, is this person really, does this person understand that this person they're talking about is dead? Because they're still seeing the person as alive. Okay. So how you know, they'll have moments and brutes of just lonesomeness. They are just having despair. So this acceptance so, problem is where I always try to. So, so, um, um, so that we can walk through recovery. Okay, Taiwo, um, I was has going to say that, um, stemming from this issue of um, timetable, I've seen people yes. say, oh, especially women, when their husbands yeah. die, they expect that there's a time frame. It has to be a year. It has to be two years. You can't wear white. You can't wear black. You can't go to parties. How are we supposed to deal with all this? Oh, that's a cultural thing. It's you know that. Thing. I mean, and thank God for this our blessed country, Nigeria. <laughs> you know, I don't know about others, but when I was a widow, I had to go through putting on stark black. And you know, black can have an effect on you, actually in the hot sun sometimes. Mm. You have to, if you don't do it, the thing that you are not, yeah. you don't miss your husband or you are not bereaved. Or when or you can not, go back to work, you know. Oh, it's still, you, you, when you go, you have to go back to work, you are still putting on the black. You know, so one day, you know, it depends on how strong you are and how your mindset is. For me, after a certain time, if you, you have to know who you are. You know, in Nigeria especially, mindset is a big thing. Yeah. I, do not, I don't like people being defined by just cultural norms. Retrogressive cultural norms should be totally wiped eradicated out yeah. thank you and particularly at women because women in fact um by god's grace we must put together a, 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 a memoir that would go to the house of representatives talking about widows and the stigmatization and the things people go through when we lose a husband because husbands don't go through that with their wives they don't. exactly they if I, okay, okay. this so, had happened so, to Taiwo, a lady Taiwo, yeah. this pastor's mm. issue, it was issue mm. what people are talking about yeah she would have been stoned okay so Taiwo, there's, there's something else i wanted to bring up because i i've heard someone i mean i, I know someone that lost his wife 
and I think within um, two years, the man remarried. And my sister was upset. I mean, because he had um, young children, you know, and my sister was upset that, does it mean that you just move on like that? In fact, a friend of mine chatted me yesterday that if, 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 if anything, God forbid, anything happens that she dies and the husband just moves on like that, that the thunder that will strike him from her grave <laughs> is going to come for him. Like, you know, because they always feel that it is women take longer to recover and it is insensitive for a man, you know, to just mm. remarry, you know, after a year or after two years of losing a spouse. But, mm. I mean, is that not like trying to judge someone because you don't even know the man might be married to a to this person but his heart still remains with his wife right so how do we yeah. even help people because my point here is we need to reorient take the mind of people change the mindset of people that let people be when they lose a loved one let them be whatever they do just support them and give them love because it's like we are fighting them you know, for their choices. Mm. And you don't know what is going on in the heart of that person. And to back up what Uwa has just said in, in, ref, in respect of supporting, what do you mm. term to be support for somebody who is grieving? What do you term to be support for someone who is grieving? I want to make a quick um, comment on what Uwa said. You know, she said um, there are so many ways you find out that men are being treated differently. And even a man who marries so quickly after his wife dies, mm -hmm. you know, is seen as, let's say, sinful. But you see, sometimes we have to be realistic. Mm. This man, men don't have Your the capacity children. women have. Don't forget that mothers are naturally nurturers. Mm. So even when they lose their spouse, the father of their children, because of their maternal instinct, they are still there cleaving to their children and wanting to make sure everything is okay for those children. With men, they're not natural when it not comes true. to nurturing. They are breadwinners, mostly, you know, mainly. But of course, they're also involved in bringing up the children. So you find out that a man, when he marries so quickly, it may not that be that he's not missing his wife, his ex-wife, I mean, his, his late wife, wife. yes that he needs to he needs support he's torn apart he doesn't even know what to do in terms of looking after children children so he needs to fill up that vacuum very quickly i mean i'm sorry i don't want to mention names but we i know a very close friend also in, uh, uh, that we, is in the redeemed christian church of god in england and he married about 18 months after he lost his wife oh yes you know, and it was a scandal <laughs> He married he quickly, and everybody did not, nobody, nobody, I mean, people said things, but he couldn't be bothered. He's happy. So when we go to, you know, when we think about people who are grieving and how they are coping, we should become less, you know, critical That's it. and judgmental. Because tomorrow, if it is the woman that moves on and she marries, or you understand? I know all hell will break loose. Absolutely. Well, that's the, the woman who wants, who, who wants to listen to what people will say. Is the, is, she's deciding to, to, to do what people want for her. You can't live your life by what people want you to be. They can't stigmatize you and they cannot put you in a, in a prison. You have to be able to decide where you want to do. Is it time to move on? But with most women, you find out because we're emotionally tied to our husbands mm. somehow. Mm. You know, women are women. We are created different. Exactly. Venus and Mars, you know what we talk about. <laughs> Women don't move on as quickly as men. Possibly, men yeah. move faster. Mm. And to help a woman move faster, as in accepting, I will look at it, I'm, I'm going to use references from the widows, um, um, uh, widows um, um, organization I am in. We find out that there are different categories of widows too. We have very young widows. So a widow who loses her husband at the age of 32, mm. what do you expect her to do? has young children she also needs the support hello exactly yeah i can hear you we can hear you she needs support too i mean i i always advise them you know what don't think about anybody if your yeah, in-laws don't want to talk to, to you anymore that's mm. their business you didn't kill your husband move on you need you also deserve to be happy there is something called the pursuit of happiness and in life everyone must decide what is my pursuit of happiness. happiness how do i get there we have different road maps okay so how what do you find because we are running quickly out of time how do you find strength right 
and to move on and not feel guilty both as a man or as a woman right you lose a loved one you lose a child you lose a, a spouse how do you move on find that strength to move on and not feel guilty I first thing I've told you we covered that mm -hmm. we accept the reality of the loss okay then help we have people who help us through the pain or grief mm -hmm. it can be anybody not mm -hmm. in nigeria you know we don't really have a lot of counseling exactly then you also have to adjust your life to not not being with that deceased person anymore start talking self-talk to yourself this person is dead i need to move on mm -hmm. you know and that doesn't mean you're shutting that person out. out you know we always say fond memories stay with us forever yeah mm -hmm. so that that becomes has a, a block you know it's like you you have a, you open up a treasure house for that person you put those memories in there you sit in and out from the from where you are now and from the memories you put together for that person which which, which can be very soothing to to you too because you can never really forget those you love mm -hmm. and then the most important is to maintain a connection so with things you know there are some things like um i'm, I'm, I'm just going to give an example See, what the disease if somebody dies like your brother now or maybe my husband i know that he loves certain things you know we know that he you think you start to have you maintain a connection with that disease i don't know whether i'm making my you are making absolute, absolute sense totally, yeah totally even while you are moving on in life you still have those connections maybe that person was let's say a philanthropist let's take a video for example so you go has, you continue you. in her yeah. legacy but it would be nice you know just to keep on feeling a bit to continue those and mm. and, and mm. you because he knows that when he continues it she's smiling be wherever she is that i'm doing something in memory of a bit of what yeah. she started yeah you know mm. at, at doing that you're adjusting gradually to the new reality of life mm. Because you are now living, that person is dead. And you just know that even though that person is still there in your heart, you are moving on gradually. It helps you transition. In the case of, of, of families, husbands or wives, I mean, people who had um, a relationship, a marriage, you find out that the children are a strong tie to that person. You look at the child. Like me, I look at my son sometimes and I wonder, ah, how can you look so much like your your father, your father. Mm. you know mm. it's it's amazing so you see little things even in terms of things they will do you no know, mannerisms you find out that they act the part of that your lost loved one wow. exactly so it gives you you know you're you're, you're not staying you're, you've accepted you know because i said acceptance makes you move on yeah but you're still enjoying that person wow you know Mem in let's talk talk about life through yeah. the memories the good memories you've kept wow thank thank you taiwo we have run out of time Hello. thank you yeah, so much taiwo we've run out of time i'm so sorry but i have to cut you there but you know what we are going to bring you back because what you just mentioned now we took a story last yeah. week where a man that they had. I can't, I've lost your sound. Can oh, you hear me? oh, sorry, she sound, cannot hear me. I can't hear you. Okay, but I think uh, we will need to bring her back because um, Hello? last week we had a story that Sanzi took about exactly. the, the man sleeping, sleeping with, with his, his daughters, daughters with the with the with mindset the, of psychological that because, problem. Yeah, that uh, yeah. He, he, because he lost his wife. That I mean, so that is perfect. another part that we will now have to deal with. That one is just the, you know, but the man is actually sick. All right, so thank you, ladies, for doing this with <laughs> thank me. Thank you. All right, so in case, um, in ca please watch the repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been a very, very insightful, insightful and very calm, som somber. Somber. Somber totally conversation, somber. yeah. I knew it was going to turn out like yeah. this. Yeah. So I already anticipated. <laughs> so keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Only people who are capable of loving strongly can also suffer great sorrow but this same necessity of loving serves to counteract their grief and heals them so we're hoping and to our heart goes out to every single one that has lost a loved one our heart goes out to you all over the world because globally we are facing a real you know, people are dying by the day, so our heart goes out to you. It was a tough topic to discuss, but we are happy we were able to discuss them. Please, for those that are around people, 
I mean, this is not a time to judge people. You don't know what is going on in their hearts. Support. Support them and just... However they want to yes, grieve. Exactly. However they want to grieve. Thank you so much, Lamy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Isi. All right, we'll see you tomorrow live at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. Stay alive.